Hi, my name is Michael, and today I'll be giving a quick demo of how to use Biodoc to create a powerful custom AI pipeline that can detect any object within your images with remarkable accuracy. I've already created my account and created a project under the side tab, AI Models. Once that's been done, I can import data from my local file system, Google Drive, Box, Dropbox, or OneDrive, or I can select files that I already have on Biodoc. Today, I'll be selecting files that have already been uploaded. If you have images that are too big, Biodoc will automatically crop them into an optimal size for training. Once these files have been uploaded, we are taken into the AI model dashboard, which is your control center for creating training data. The dashboard contains labeling progress and three labeling columns. First, your files start in the left column, not yet labeled, and as you finish labeling them, they progress forward until they are finished in the right column. To start labeling a file, simply click on it. We can easily add a label class by clicking the plus button here. A label class represents a type of object you want to detect and measure in your images during analysis. In this case, we want to look at these intestinal gland structures called crypts. So we name it crypts in the form and use the selector to toggle between object and region classes. In most cases, you'll want to choose object. To start adding a cell, we can simply click on the created object or press the keyboard shortcut shown on the right, one, to start creating a new object. It's easy to drag or click to continue drawing the object. The object completes and is automatically saved once we finish the polygon. You can see it in the labeled objects pane. To start a new one, just start drawing again. Now, if you make a mistake, you can simply edit your object, adding or removing from it to get pixel perfect. Select the object from the viewer and click the pen icon and you can add or remove from the object easily. You'll notice that this image has automatically moved into the in progress state. To complete an image, just hit the Mark as Completed button at the top. Usually, you'd want to do this after labeling more thoroughly. It's important to label every object within each image, but we'll flip it for now. Coming out of the labeler, you can see that the image is now put in the labeled column. You'll want to continue this to label the rest of the images based on what you are looking to identify. Skipping forward a little bit, I've added some more data and finally finished labeling each of the images I'd like to train on. I enlisted the help of some of my teammates, who I was easily able to invite using the settings page. You can add members as owners or labelers to collaboratively work to improve your annotations. Once you are ready, go to the Train and Deploy tab to start AI model training. We can name our pipeline and give it a description, and then we'll get a comprehensive summary of our data, our labels, and any errors or warnings. Making sure you resolve all errors and as many warnings as possible ensures the best results. You'll also be able to tune your augmentations as well as choose your training and test set. Once we're ready to go, we look at how many training credits our models will consume and simply click train. This will automatically start a training process across four GPUs, which should take just a few hours. You can monitor progress using this status here. A couple hours later, you've now trained a powerful AI model. We use state-of-the-art vision transformer models for maximum accuracy. Now, we can simply set this pipeline as active. This pipeline is now ready to be used on any of your current or future data of any size. So, how do you actually run one of these pipelines? Let's navigate to the file system where we organize your data and allow you to import from the cloud. You can upload data from many different microscope formats from local or as before any of our third-party integrations. Even connect an Amazon S3 account to import data from S3. We'll start today with this folder of 500 images. We simply right-click, which brings us to the Actions menu. From here, you can easily share with colleagues or download out. But right now, we'll hit Analyze, which will bring us to the Analysis screen. Notice that we now have a new custom pipeline in the Analyze screen ready to use. That's the pipeline that you just trained. You can easily access different versions of this pipeline through this dropdown and select it. There are zero parameters on the pipeline and you submit all 500 images by just pressing submit. What's happening now is we're spinning up 500 machines to process your images. You can submit as many jobs as you'd like at a time. Now, once the job completes, just click on the name to open the results dashboard. Here, 
you can view the results from the analysis. At the top of this file, you can find experimental filters. Biodoc has automatically created experimental groups inferred from your folder hierarchy. This allows you to easily compare different experimental groups. Go even deeper by using filters. You can easily create subgroup gates, just like flow cytometry, by using this dropdown. Gate by drawing or by statistics. At any time, you can export your data out of the dashboard by pressing this button. If we move downwards, you can see that Biodoc has a powerful object widget, combining a statistics plot, a zoomable object overlay viewer, and a metrics table. All three of these are linked, meaning that you could see exactly where an object, in this case a goblet cell, falls within a statistical distribution, view where it locates within the tissue, and interrogate specific metrics on that cell all at the same time. You can even QC by editing any object to change its class or the shape of its outline. We automatically recompute metrics. Finally, if we scroll down, we have the aggregate graph. This aggregate graph can compare on the image level or the group level. In this case, if we look at our groups, we can see at a bird's eye view the value and standard deviation differences in our experiments, allowing us to make broad conclusions at a quick glance. That's the overview. Today we've glossed over some of the finer points, but you can find more information in a comprehensive public documentation linked on the bottom left in the sidebar. Or if you want our support, you can use our in-app chat in order to contact us. Thanks so much.